morning. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to do our scripture, but we'll have our uh, our hymn first. You know, last night, I want to tell you this. It uh, I was listening to a, a gentleman, and he was giving a prayer, and I thought, wow. And he, he started to talk about how we should pray. You know, a lot of times when I was young, I would pray with reserve because I didn't feel, I didn't have that feeling that, you know, I can talk the way I really want to talk to God. And he said, we need to go to God with everything. If you're upset with God, talk to him about it. I thought, wow, that's really strange. And then he prayed and he started off with, Father God. I've never done that. And it just sounded really nice to me. Um, our, shall we stand for our first song? Our scripture is Galatians 5, 16 and 17. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is up the spirit, and that the spirit desires is opposite to the flesh, for these are opposite to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. Should we bow our heads? Father, our God, thank you for allowing us to speak to you to tell you the things that are in our hearts and what we're disturbed with and what we're happy about. Thank you for your Sabbath and especially thank you for your son, Jesus. Help us to have a good day today and all the things that we do and say be to your honor and your glory. Amen. Living for Jesus. What does that mean, living for Jesus? It means following his teachings, example in every aspect of our life. It involves putting his teachings into practice and making them part of one's daily life and routine. We are called to live for Jesus and follow him in everything we say and do. Get excited about a new job, something happening that in your life. It's, it's a good thing to, to spend time praying each day. Prayer is how we build a personal relationship with God. We talk about our troubles to him, our sins, things you're excited about. Number two, serving others. These are ten things I wrote down. Number two is serving others. Honor Jesus by giving your time, your energy to other people. Help them when they're in need. Forgive them when they do things wrong. And love them no matter what. That is hard, isn't it? There's things that have happened in my life that I have to be honest, sometimes I still hold a grudge about it. Not too long ago, I was at the grocery store, and I'm pushing my grocery cart full of groceries out to the parking lot, and this truck is coming towards me, a pickup, and he's getting closer and closer to the curb. I said, boy, this guy is going to hit the cart or something, and so I stopped. 
he had his window down and he drove right up to where he could speak to me. And I said, sir, you need to move to the right a little bit so I can get the cart through. You stupid da 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 and cuss words and everything else. And I'm going, what the heck? You know? Is don't you not that's why I stopped here so you could move on. And I said, Well, if I move on, you might hit the cart. And well, you're just a stupid blah 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 blah. Boy, I tell you, my temper went up. I wanted to reach into that window and pull him out and teach him a lesson. I thought, okay, okay, calm down, Jay. Have a great day. And he drove on. It's things that happen in our life. And, you know, I believe Satan does that just to see what, what we're going to do, how we're going to react. It had me angry. Serving others. Number three, study the Bible. You have to understand God's word to live for him. If you want to live for and like Jesus, you have to know what he was like. The first four books of the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell us about Jesus' life and the lessons he taught to his followers. This can be a great place to start studying if you haven't done it in a while. Do it again. God's Word is wonderful. But don't stop there. Jesus instructed us to keep the commandments in Matthew 19, 17, making it clear it's important to understand all of God's law in order to really live for Him. Our God is holy. You notice when He created the Sabbath, the seventh day, he made it holy. It's, it's, he is holy, so holy. If we, our little group here, went into a room and God was in there, we'd cease to exist. We have sin in us that he doesn't tolerate. We have to be like his son, pure, clean. And we can get that through Jesus' blood. So thankful for that. Be kind and compassionate. Jesus taught us to love our neighbors as ourselves. This means being kind and compassionate to everyone, regardless of their background or beliefs. I, I, I think about things at the grocery store. I uh, first wanted to pound on that guy. But then I thought, well, no, that isn't what I should be doing. So I told him, have a great day. Number five, be honest and truthful. Jesus was always honest and truthful, even when it was difficult. Living for Jesus means being honest and truthful in all es aspects of our life. You know, it's, it's so easy. I, I think of my marriage with Linda. There's times when we've had a dispute. I'll just say a dispute. And, and I know she's right. But what do I do? I'll change the subject. I'll turn the subject back onto her. And that way, I'm the good guy, you know. But that's not what God wants us to do. We're to be honest. And the, now that I've gotten older, young man now, young, uh, I've learned that it's best to say, I'm sorry, I was wrong. And I, I think she appreciates that. I do it when she does to me. I go, wow, that's pretty cool. I was right. 
Number six, forgive others. Jesus taught us to forgive others even when they hurt us. Living for Jesus means forgiving others and letting go of guilt, our hate, our revenge. Number seven, be humble. Christ was humble and never put himself above, above others. Living for Jesus means being humble and putting others before us. Number eight, be generous. Christ taught us to be generous and give to those in need. Living for Jesus means being generous with our time, our money, our resources. Well, sometimes that's difficult, but we have to do the best we can. And the Holy Spirit will impress us when we need to do something. I'm positive he does that. Be patient. Number nine. Jesus was patient with his disciples and with those who opposed him. Living for Jesus means being patient with others and trusting in God's timing. You know, I can remember uh, my sister when she first got married, probably in our late 20s, and she married a guy that when he came home from work, he'd sit down in his chair, turn the TV on. I want my dinner. And he did that every evening. And I go and talk to my sister. I said, what the heck? Why are you putting up with that? Well, she didn't put up with it very long. I don't think any woman, but we have to be patient. It's a hard one to deal with. Number 10, love God. Jesus taught us to love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. Living for Jesus means loving God above all else and putting him first in our lives. I want to give you a list of 15 things that the Holy Spirit does for us, which is kind of cool. He knows the things of God. 1 Corinthians 2.11 He searches our heart. 1 Corinthians 2.10 He speaks to us. Acts 1.16 He teaches us. Luke 12.12 12. And also John 14, 26. The Holy Spirit directs us. Acts 8, 29. The Holy Spirit guides us. John 16, 13. The Holy Spirit hears us. I love that part where he hears us. Number eight, he helps us, Romans 8, 26. He washes us, 1 Corinthians 6, 11. And when I heard this one, I, I can remember as a kid, and I thought, wow. He groans when we're praying with his words to, his, to the Father. He groans for us with deep groaning. I thought that was incredible when he incedes for us. Romans 8, 26. He witnesses to us. Acts 20. He reproves us. 
He intercedes for us, Romans 8, 26. He can be grieved. He also can be blasphemed. That's Mark 3, 29. Our human spirit also has some of the same attributes as the Holy Spirit. I want to read, uh, I found this yesterday. It's Ephesians 1, 17. Should have brought my glasses. Um, here we go. That the God of our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revival in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened that you may know what is the hope to that which he has called you, that are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints, and as you go on in Hebrew, uh, Ephesians, it talks about the Holy Spirit sealing us. We are sealed. Once you give your heart to Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in our temple and he seals us. We are part of his family. We are sons and daughters of Christ. I like that. I never had a real father, so I always would say, well, God is my father, so I have a father, and he'll never leave me. He's always there for me, and I'm thankful for that. That's comforting. I don't know about you guys, but it was comforting for me to know that my heavenly father, I'm in the palm of his hand, and he won't let anything take me out of his hand unless I do it. But he keeps me and he keeps you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, thank you, thank you for your son. We'd all be lost without him. And thank you for your Sabbath that we can come and worship you and sing songs to you and praise your holy name. Help us today to always remember what we do and say be to your honor and your glory. In Jesus' name, amen.